Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. Your Sambo. Joining us as always is Seraphis, our Worgen mage, who's sitting down taking a load off and she's getting covered up by a message there. If you were with us in our last episode, you might remember that we dinged level 10. Yay us! Level 10 is quite a significant level to ding in World of Warcraft for a number of reasons and we'll get into that right now starting with the great big yellow thing that splashed across our screen here. You can see that it says you have earned your first talent point. Click here to choose your talents. So a new button has appeared on our minibar down the middle there. And it's the third one along. And if you hover over it, it says Talents, which is the N key as well. And the description there says the array of talents available to you to enhance and specialize your character. So let's do that. Let's click on it. And, uh, by the way, if you haven't played WoW for some time, this has changed a whole lot. It uh, looks a lot different than it used to. And you basically have a thing now called specializations. And you'll see up the top here, it's all very easy to follow. It says select a mage specialization because of course we are a mage. You will immediately receive powerful bonuses. So the very first choice we have is that we have to choose one of our specializations. And in this term, uh, this sense, get it right Sambo. It's a specialization of various elemental power. So we've got an arcane tree we have a fire tree and we have a frost tree now there's little descriptions here by the way and it says okay firstly what type of role is it and you can see a little icon beneath the actual tree icon there and it says here damage so this particular tree is a damage tree and it will be the same for all of these because the mage is just a damage spec but for example if you were a paladin or a shaman or a priest something like that you may find that this is different for example it may say that the second tree is heals first one is defense and the last one is dps or whatever in our case it's all damage you can see here that it does a little explanation so you can tell for example arcane manipulates arcane energies playing with the very fabric of time and space that sounds dramatic doesn't it uh, we've got a fire mage here which ignites enemies with balls of fire and the breath of dragons um, gosh, these are epic sounding descriptions. The Frost Mage freezes enemies in their tracks and shatters them with frost magic. So, depending on the style of play that you want to do, uh, you can choose one of these trees. And it, what, what it'll do now is when you choose a specialization, it will actually give you a couple of things straight away. So, for example, if we were to choose the Fire Tree, we can hover over these it would um, automatically give us a skill called pyroblast and you can see here it's a long long cast 2.6 seconds cast uh, causes high fire damage at long range and continues continues damaging the enemy for 12 more seconds and it says here it's a long cast time so use it as an opener or where, when enemies are far away so that one there not only does a huge amount of damage but it also puts a dot on the enemy which ticks away doing damage for another 12 seconds it also says here that you gain a passive called fire specialization which increases the damage of all your fire spells by 25 percent let's have a look at frost this one is very cool we actually get a pet so if we wanted to go down the frost route we actually get ourselves a little water elemental summons a water elemental to assist you until it dies recast whenever you don't have one active so what that means is we can always have this pet up and it uh, much like the warlock it acts like a, a little tank and it also does dps as well and of course we gain a frost specialization which increases the damage of our frost spells as opposed to our fire spells over here by 25 percent and your frost bolt spell damage is also increased by an additional 15 percent and that's by going into the frost tree let's have a look at the arcane tree here we get a skill called arcane barrage uh, what does that do causes arcane damage at long range casts instantly so use it when moving or when an enemy is in melee range so that's quite a handy thing the more abilities we have that we're able to use uh, when we're moving as a mage the better uh, because of course we're not very agile on our feet normally we have to stand in place to do our long casts and of course we get an arcane specialization a passive as well which increases the damage of all of our arcane spells by 25 percent now when you click on one of these you will automatically uh, spec as it's called spec into that tree <clears throat> and you'll get one of these new abilities just for free 
If you do want to actually view the talent trees themselves, so if we want to see what's available to us later on as we level up in the talent tree, we can actually click on this button here, view talent trees, and there they are. Okay, so these actually display the talent tree. So don't be bummed out if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, hang on, I have to pick one of these. What, what do I get when I'm like level 50? Don't worry. You can go into the view summaries here and have a look. So this is how talent trees work. Every time you level up, pretty much you get a point and you can choose one of these talents, which could be a new skill, <clears throat> could just be a passive. It could affect uh, an ability that you already have whatever it does you add them one by one as you level up so of course it means you can't have all three basically you uh, also is that this has changed a lot since the old days as well you have to get to the bottom of one tree before you can start specking into another and that's a very important change in the world of warcraft and, and for goodness sake make sure you get it right because otherwise you're going to have to go and re-talent your uh, skills and these talent trees and that's going to cost you a whole bunch of gold from a trainer so at the moment for example if we were to go down the arcane tree talenting 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 and we get down you know up here it says requires 10 points in arcane talents and of course because we're already level 10 that would mean at around about level 20 we'd get there and then we decide that we don't like this tree anymore and we want to start specking into another one you can't you can't until you reach the very bottom and it requires 30 points down there which basically means that once you hit level 40, you're going to be able to then start um, specking into a different tree. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you which one's the best, because there is no such thing as a best or worst tree. And there's a naked man running around. Hello, Sibertooth. You are very naked. What's he going to do? He's not going to flash us, is he? I don't want to click on him because then he'll know we're here. Hopefully he thinks we're AFK. <laughs> That's disturbing. Stop staring at us, Sibertooth. Who are you? Now, look, if you're one of our viewers, I apologize. But if you are, then say hello. <coughs> anyway. <clears throat> oh, God, we've got a naked man. Get out. Look, there we go. We'll cover him up. <clears throat> now, in terms of which one is for you, well, you know what? At the end of the day, we are leveling at the moment, so it doesn't really matter. Um, these really uh, make a big difference when you're doing instances and raids and, and things like that at the end game. Of course, some are suited to leveling more than others. For example, if we go back and look at the summaries, the Frost Mage here, it has a water elemental. It's a pet. That is actually going to be really handy while we're leveling up. And thank God he's put some clothes on. Um, <clears throat> really handy while we're leveling because it's going to act as a little tank and it's going to take the focus off us. So that would actually be quite practical to use for leveling. However, it's not very high DPS, that particular um, tree. Frost. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> Here we go. Now you've seen the animation and the sound of someone um, changing forms. What level is he? He's level 12. We will get that very soon. It's very cool. Anyway, the frost is a utility tree. Good for uh, lots of freezing in place, crowd control, all that sort of stuff. Not much DPS. Fire, on the other hand. Fire is, uh, uh, um, well, it's a little bit different in that it's mainly a DPS spec, of course, and it has a lot of high upfront damage. If you like doing high upfront damage, then that's what you want to do. Although in Cataclysm, unless things have changed, Arcane actually has the highest DPS rating out of all of the trees at the moment. And of course, Arcane uh, works a lot differently than Fire. Um, and its damage is more sustained over time. Uh, not dots, but just more sustained over time than huge upfront long casts. So I'm personally actually a big fan of Arcane. I really, really like it. We should probably go the Water Elemental because that would be handy for us leveling, but I just don't like Frost as a tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Arcane just by clicking on it. There we go. And once I go Learn, uh, that is it. I'm going to actually be talented into Arcane and I'm going to have those talents that it promised me out on the front page. So I'm going to click on learn. Are you sure you want to learn these talents? Yes, we are. There we go. We've learned a new spell, Arcane Barrage. If we go to our spell book, which is P, Arcane Barrage, sorry. Here it is. Causes Arcane damage at a long range. It's got a 40 yard range, very long. Casts instantly though, so use while moving or when an enemy is in melee range. I wonder if there's something we can test that on quickly. 
No, okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but the big thing is, of course, it's an instant. Now, that's not it. We also learned arcane specialization. You can see that's uh, come up there as a passive. Increases the damage of your arcane spells by 25%. Now, that means things like... Um, well, this, Arcane Missiles, that now does a whole bunch more damage than before. In fact, 25% damage more. And same with the Arcane Barrage. barrage. All right, let's go back into our talent tree because we're not finished here. Um, you can see that up the top here it says you have one unspent talent point, and that's because we dinged level 10. We got a point when we ding level 11. We'll get another one, etc., etc., etc. And we now get to choose how to put it into our talent tree. So we've got three choices here, and you can see this one here has three options. It's called Arcane Concentration, and we're currently ranked 0 of 3. Improved Counterspell is 0 of 2, so that can be talented up twice. And another one with three talent points available to be spent in it is Netherwind Presence. Now we'll go through them in a minute, but what's important is we can't get to the next row of talents here <clears throat> until we've spent a total of five talent points in this first row. So you can see here, if I hover over it, it says Improved Arcane Missiles requires 5 points in Arcane Talents. So we have to wait till we're level 15 until we can start specking into that row there. Now, in terms of what we've got available for us now, this one gives us a 3% chance of entering a clear casting state after any damage spell hits a target. And the clear casting state, what that does is it reduces the mana cost of your next damage spell by 100%. Now that is really handy later on because uh, if we put three points into that, that basically means we'll have a 10% chance of entering clear casting and it means we can pop off a free spell. It doesn't cost us any of this mana up here. Now right now it doesn't matter because we regen mana so fast, but later on that'll become really important because it basically is a free shot and we will definitely spec into that at some point if not straight away. Counter spell, this is um, working on the counter spell ability we have down the bottom here which currently interrupts a spell being cast but that's all it does, it just stops them. The spell caster that we've put it on can then start casting again straight away. However, if we put it into, uh, put our talent point into this improved counter spell uh, talent, now by the way a lot of the talents are improvements on your ex existing ability so bear that in mind, the counter spell will not only um, stop and interrupt them, but it will also silence that target for two seconds. Now, I'm going to assume that if we put two points in, it's going to silence them for longer, for four seconds. And what is silence, you say? Silence means that if we do use this, not only does it interrupt their current spell, but they can't cast a spell from the same school of thought, so the same tree, the same like arcane, frost, frost fire, the enemy can't cast another spell for another two seconds, so it literally shuts them down and silences them, which can mean the difference between life and death in the later levels, trust me. And then the third option we've got here, which is Netherwind Presence. This increases your spell haste by 1%, and uh, if we talent it up fully, it's three slots, so we can actually get a spe spell haste increase by 3%. Now that also is very important, doesn't sound like much, but if we go down here to our spell stats, you can see that we have a haste stat here. And currently it's zero. <clears throat> now what that means is that our cast time is going to be reduced. So for example, at the moment our where is it? Our frost bolt cast time is 1.74 seconds. If we talented into this, it would reduce by a further 1%. Now it adds up when you also get gear that uh, increases your haste and for example at higher levels that spell may come all the way down to sort of a 1.5 second cast or something like that and that can also mean that your DPS goes up of course because it's taking less time to output the same amount of damage so your damage per second which is the DPS uh, it will actually relatively go up. So there you go that's the three options that we have uh, one of them is basically a utility to give us a free 100% mana, or rather zero cost of mana on one of our next spells. The other one is a silence, and this one is a haste. Which one will we take? Mm, I'm going to take the probably the haste or the clear casting at this point. I would like to put points into clear casting, so I'm going to plan ahead a little bit and notice that we've got three and six. I'm probably going to put two into one and three into another, so let's put clear casting in now. And you can see there that uh, once I've done that, I can play around with them. I can left click to enter it. I can right click to take it off again. And once I'm happy, I can click learn down the bottom here. And like it says, when you finish spending points, click learn. You can always reset your talent choices by visiting your class trainer. So we're going to do that. Are you sure you want to learn these talents? Yes. 
and there you go you can see there's a, a green one by that we've actually put one point into our talent tree already uh, now by the way you can inspect other players talents we'll get to that when we see another planer player let's go to our mage trainer healing. and okay she's not going to be able to do it for us but we can actually reset um, maybe it's because we're in an early zone oh, she should be able to reset our talents actually come to think of it yeah, I'm not actually sure why that is she should have an option there to reset our talents watch your back hmm. Maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe it's changed in one of the more recent patches. No, I don't know. Anyway, that's the way it should be. All right, so there we go. That is the talent points, which is um, down there under, uh, where is it? The third one there, talents, N key. Now you know how that works. You can still view your summaries if you want to. You can switch between the two of them. All right, there's one more important thing we need to talk about before we get back into the action, which is another thing that's opened up now that we are level 10. And you'll see down the bottom here, we've got a player versus player button that's become enabled, PVP. Let's hit H, there's the other way of getting in there. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Now, most importantly, we've had some battlegrounds that have opened up now we're level 10. And you can see that there's two of them. One is Arathi Basin, and one is Warsong Gulch. And basically what they are, in this turn, in this case, Warsong Gulch is a capture the flag map. And basically that's a, well, I think it's two teams of 15, I can't remember exactly. The thing about it is, is that they play in brackets, level brackets. So I'm pretty sure Warsong Gulch is level 10 to level 19. So if we were to go and join that battleground now, we'd be right at the bottom of the heap. We'd get absolutely owned. But uh, for the purposes of our Let's Play, we will do that. Uh, not in this episode, because we really need to devote a whole episode to it. But I'll show you how that works. Basically, you will join, click Join Battle. That will put us in a queue. Once there's enough players for that battleground, it will transport us directly there. We don't have to travel anywhere. And if we win, we'll get 90 Conquest points. And if we lose, we'll get 15. So that's just a way of building up conquest points, which actually can buy you equipment and gear, mainly PvP based. There's also another one there, Arathi Basin, uh, and that is like a domination style map, basically. We're in that, and in fact I can show you, because this is another good thing that Atlas is good for. We can actually choose battleground maps, there we go. And you can see here, here's a list of all the battlegrounds, including, by the way, one in Gilneas. But if we click on Warsong Gulch, there it is. There is a map of what it looks like. You can see where the uh, Alliance start and where the Horde start. And basically, you've got to get from one end to the other, capturing the other person's flag. It's nice and easy. If we choose, where is it? <clears throat> there it is, Arathi Basin. You can see its level range is... Uh, 10 to 84. Oh, and it's in spans of 5. That's good. So that means the first bracket is only players that are level 10 to 15. Actually, let's double check. Warsong Gulch. Okay, that has changed as well. My apologies. I retract what I said. It is now level range 10 to 84. So it goes all the way through. But it's done in brackets of 5 as well. So that makes it a whole bunch easier. So the highest level players that we'd come up against in there if we went in now would be level 15. That's very cool. Anyway, back to Arathi Basin, which is the other one that's opened up. Basically, it's a big basin. Once again, you start at either end of it here. Down the bottom there is the Horde, and up the top is the Alliance. You notice these green numbers here. Basically, you've got the stables, the gold mine, the blacksmith, the lumber mill, and the farm. And you basically have to go there and capture those areas and hold them. And the more you have, it's like a capture and hold uh, style that you've played in other games probably. As you have these held, a little ticker up the top ticks down. And basically, if you have none held, that number will uh, reduce very fast. If you've got lots of these held, that number will go down a lot slower. And it's the first team to reach zero that loses. So the goal is here to try and manage, um, you know, wandering around and capturing and keeping and defending all of these points. And of course, you can't do it all at once because you've only got uh, a player limit of 15. And that means effectively you'd have to have three on each one and that's not going to work so you, it's a really big good battle of um, sort of tug of war if you like uh, and that can be lots of fun so we'll definitely do that let's see how many players are in Warsong Gulch these days uh, player limit is 10 so it's five uh, ten aside I think or five, oh, is it five aside I honestly can't remember now pretty sure it's ten aside uh, and that's the capture the flag one there so we will do them in another episode but it's very important as they have opened up you see another couple of tabs 
uh, down the bottom you can see uh, something called conquest there we're not high enough level to use this feature you have to be level 70 and the same with arenas which are teams of pvp and we'll talk about that on another character that i've got which is uh, or all my other characters that are level 70 or above anyway it's important that you know that those battle grounds are available now and you will get honor for them as well sorry they aren't conquest points what am i saying uh, they are honor points the icon for them has changed since the last time i looked sorry and when you actually get honor points you can spend those on like it says they're earned as a reward for battlegrounds and other types of pvp and used to purchase powerful pvp armor and weapons all right that's enough gabbing from us we've got a new skill here let's try it out that was if you might remember we got it from our talent tree the arcane barrage so let's open up with a long range frost bolt on this guy and then we'll try a barrage boom look at that go in and that did a huge amount of damage taking him down to about 15 percent health and there we go and of course all of my arcane spells now are going to be increased in damage thanks to um, the arcane specialization which i got from as a passive from my talent tree all the damage of my arcane spells are increased by 25 percent now so it's very cool <clears throat> Right, let's finish off these, this quest. We've got three of six done. Do a fireball. Do our arcane uh, missiles because, of course, we are an arcane spec now. I need a target. And there we go. There's that damage again, by the way. You can see the dot up the top here by the mini map. If I get it out, there you go. You can see it. Seven seconds left. Nature damage inflicted every three seconds. That's a poison put on us by that spider. But anyhow, what we want to be doing is using our arcane spells as much as possible because... Oh, and that ding, that was a clear casting state. I'll let him attack us up the top here. Your next damage spell has its mana cost reduced by 100. Let's use the uh, arcane barrage. Barrage, rather. That did not cost us any mana because of the... Um, uh, clear casting state that popped up and of course that's from here our arcane concentration gives us a three percent chance of entering a clear casting state so you can see there's lots and lots going on we've got the poison debuff from the spider we've got a um, clear casting uh, buff that comes up on us giving us a free spell we've got the arcane specialty which is giving us 25 percent extra damage so we want to be focusing on using them as much as possible still i want to use the frost bolt as an opener because it does slow the target right down and we'll use the great big arcane um, barrage there to uh, finish them off. And like it says, even though it's instant, um, you can definitely use it when it's in um, melee range, but it also does work at long range. So let's target that spider way over there in the background. And you'll see now if I open with it, which is a bit stupid. Oh, it's not, it's gone out of line of sight. Where'd it go? There it is. No, stop moving. Oh, good Lord. You'll see it fire across there. There we go. Very cool effect. But it can be used at range, it's not just for, um, whoops, I use my frost nova, uh, not just used for um, melee range. Now, by the way, another thing I've noticed that's popped up here as, that is dropping as we're um, killing these spiders are the small spider legs. Let's have a look in our cooking book, and you can see there, look at that, we have an ingredient, or rather now we have an ingredient that we can use in this Kaldori spider kebab um, cooking um, recipe and we'll get out of harm's way for a minute because this is very important this one this is a very cool recipe for a number of reasons uh, let's make ourselves a fire nice fire out in the rain here we go and this is where taking cooking really starts paying off let's make all of these some nice spider kebabs om nom 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 and there they go into our bags now you can see straight away that we've been using spice bread up till now now spice bread just gives us 51 health over 18 seconds and at first glance you'll say well, what's the difference here these also restore 51 health over 18 seconds however if we spend at least 10 seconds eating these so in other words we sit down and eat them we will become well fed and that's a buff and we'll gain two stamina and two spirit for 15 minutes as a food buff now that may not sound like much, but down here, if we look at our uh, major stats and our attributes, two stamina will actually give us 20 extra health points or hit points. That is a big deal when we're uh, only three, uh, what are we, 187. So that will basically take us to over 200 hit points just by uh, eating that food and being well fed. The other one it gives us, which is spirit, uh, you can see that actually increases our mana regen and that will mean that it takes a lot less time for us to refill our mana bar after a long fight. That is also very important. So 
What are we going to do? We're going to get rid of the spiced bread because we don't really need that anymore. And off our hot bar anyway. We're going to put the spiced uh, spider kaldori spider kebabs on our hot bar. Get it right. And we're going to eat them. So let's do that. Nom nom nom. There we go. Now watch up the top here for a buff that appears. And I'll try and get it in clear space. There we go. So up here after 10 seconds. Hopefully, there we go, a well-fed buff. Stamina and spirit increased by two. You can see now that our hit points have gone over 200. We're now 207. And our spirit now has an extra buff, and that mana regen rate has increased to 17 per five seconds. So as you can tell, folks, it's well worth getting cooking. Now, at these lower levels, it doesn't seem like much, but at the higher levels of play, uh, once you get your cooking up, that really makes a huge difference, and especially if you're tanking. Uh, or, or in our case for spell power, things like that, you really, really want to be... Oh, that missed! You really want to be a cook, so you can uh, get these special buffs that you can't get from anywhere else, by the way. I can't count that yet. All right, so now we're really coming into our own as a uh, mage, and of course, <clears throat> this arcane barrage only has a... What is it? A four second cooldown so it's very handy you can generally use it twice in up to twice in a fight and there's the clear casting sound that big psh sound and that meant that the um, uh, arcane barrage which normally costs us 21 mana that actually was free because that procced and once again this is very uh, important to note even though it only says it's a 3% chance of entering that clear casting state, you can see in the couple of battles we've had, it's already procced twice. So you can only imagine how much it's going to proc when we put two more talent points into this, and it's going to be a 10% chance. Really, really well worth having. All right, let's kill ourselves off our last couple of spiders, even though we don't need to. It's so much fun uh, doing combat in WoW. And of course, it's uh, XP that we desperately need. Look at that. We've now got two instants, of course. We've got our Arcane uh, Barrage, uh, which is uh, the new one we've got. And we've also got our Fire Blast, which is also instant. So lots of cool instant abilities there, both of which, of course, we can use while we're, well, running away, for example, if that ever happened. There we go. I, did, I only needed to cast the Opener, Frostbolt, and our two instants, and that knocked them out totally. Oops, there goes another one, and he's aggroed onto me, so I'm going to run past and freeze him in place. Um, as long as I'm facing him, I can keep moving and use my two instants. Here we go, and now I I've got clear casting, and my arcane uh, missiles are up, and of course we didn't need to use them because we completely wiped the floor with that mob. So you can see it becomes very dynamic, very interesting. We have to, of course, stand still for this particular one. Now hopefully by the time he gets to us... Oh, look at that. It procced and it probably critted and we got ourselves a nice easy kill. There's a fire in the background there. Let's, um, we can do lots of things with our instance. So for example, if we wanted to be smart, we could run past, there we go, do that. We can run backwards and use our fire blast, be running sideways, use our arcane barrage. And you know, he's oh, nearly dead. Let's use it again because of course the arcane barrage comes off cooldown so quickly. And we're getting lots of spider legs, so we'll be able to make ourselves lots and lots of these spider Keldori spider kebabs for that buff, which has now got 12 minutes left on it. And there goes clear casting again. <laughs> of course, we don't need it because we've managed to um, kill it way ahead of time. So it's starting to become very powerful. You can see how it's starting to work and how all of these abilities and talents start working off each other. Very cool. All right, let's get back in here. We'll go to a general goods vendor. All we'll right, sell then. off our what junk. We there we go. Um, just for the purposes of save, actually, what we'll do first is we'll cook up again. So let's hope that our fireplace, is it still there? Probably not. There's some other players. No, it's not, but let's make another fire and we'll cook up the rest of our uh, Kaldori spider kebabs. Create all of them. And of course the other good thing about this is it's uh, increasing our cooking skill as well. Now, what we can do with the spiced bread is a couple of options. We can either sell them to the vendor, uh, or we can put them in our bank. I'm going to choose to put them in what the bank, because you, you never know, they might come in handy later on. And a there we go. Right <laughs> Not forgetting too, folks, right. that we've got our fishing to have a quick look at. Let's hand this in for get now. Get or get going. 
All right, now this particular one here, this is gonna give us some new silk leggings and this is a big one for us because as you can see, not only does it give us nine armor extra, but it also gives us one intellect. Now intellect is a very important stat for us. It increases our mana, it also increases our spell power and that basically increases our damage and it also increases our spell crit chance, our critical hit. And we want that because anytime our spells crit, they basically do upwards of twice the amount of damage. We want that ability to go up. Currently, it's 4.32%. We want that to go up as much as possible because we're a super nuking DPS mage. So we really want those leggings. What do we have to do for them? It's probably going to be a rather tough one. Uh, we spotted a giant spider known as Rigna at the edge, <coughs> excuse me, edge of the Blackwold. And of course, you remember the Blackwold is this part here to the north of us. It's the doomy, gloomy, um, sort of foresty bit north of Stormglen Village. Uh, obviously, they spotted one there um, in an area covered in thick webs. It'll be dangerous, but we're counting on you. Slay Rigna at Rigna's lair, and we'll get ourselves a nice Keep pair up, eh? of stat pants for that. And of course, you can see all the time our reputation with Gilneas is going up. If we hit U, that brings up our reputation tab, and you can see here we're friendly with a bunch of alliance factions, but we're now honoured with Gilneas. Now, being honoured and um, exalted and all the other um, uh, ranks up in terms of faction or standing gives you benefits. For example, um, you generally pay less. You get discounts at certain vendors like mounts, for example, become a lot cheaper, and it allows us to do a whole bunch of things. We'll get into that later on. Uh, what do we got Fine, here? Oh, that's what I want to quickly show here. you before we log out. <clears throat> Let's buy ourselves a shiny bauble. And you might remember from our last episode, uh, when applied to your fishing pole, it increases fishing Clock by 25 time. for 10 minutes. This will allow our fishing to be, what is it at the moment, 14. It'll put it to 39, which means we may actually be able to catch some fish. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll head over to the fishing area and actually, no, is that an inn? Are we at an inn? Yes, we are. Well, you know what? We should probably log out here so we get some rested XP. Beginning of our next episode, uh, we will go and do some fishing so you can see how the uh, bauble works. Um, oh, by the way, look at that. That person's got a Scenarian Hatchling, Mandela. Whoever they are, they've um, just uh, supported the uh, Japan first aid effort because, just in case you didn't know, you can buy that Scenarian Hatchling off the Blizzard store and 100% of all the proceeds made from those purchases are actually going to go to the uh, Japan Relief Fund, which of course is an amazingly generous offer on behalf of Blizzard. So you not only get to donate to the Red Cross, but you also get to um, you know, get yourselves a new combat companion pet. Sorry, not combat pet. Anyway, this is where we'll be heading in the next episode into the doomy, gloomy black world. We'll go, uh, that was to uh, kill the big spider. We can probably see her on the map. There she is. Her uh, lair will be halfway along the uh, Blackwold edge there. So that'll be fun. A nice big mob to go and kill. We'll also go and do some fishing with our new shiny bauble. But of course, until then, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Certainly hope you join us in the next one. From myself, Sambo, and uh, Seraphis, our Morgan Wage, we hope you're having a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.